Welcome back to CG Bros. In this fourth tutorial on the PDI plugin for Maya, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the fourth fracture option here under the shatter styles. Um, and that's going to be the path based fracture style. Um, let's go ahead and select our object. Let's go ahead and uh, make that surface live. I'm going to go ahead and create an EP curve. I'm going to go ahead and kind of start here at the corner and kind of Meander it around the top here on the sidewall and then over to this little dining board type structure here. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And that's going to be the basis for the fracture, uh, procedural fracture uh, of this path based uh, style. And so uh, let's go ahead and set our number of shards to the default of 1000. And we're going to go ahead and set the width here to, we'll go ahead and leave it at 0.2. And we'll go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. But first, with our curve selected here, let's go ahead and uh, select the path button here. You'll see that actually our curve shape name is actually loaded into here so we know it's connected. Let's go ahead and turn off our live surface, select our object, and um, turn off create crack or object. We don't need to do that. Uh, that's for more rigid body simulations, and I'll show you how to do that here in another tutorial. Um, but basically, we're going to go ahead and uh, see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and shatter it. Now you can see the distribution of the fracture is based along the, the curve here, and so uh, wherever the curve is along the surface is where the, you're going to get your detail. This is real, one of the, my favorite uh, fracture methods here within PDI. Look at that. That's great. So you can basically determine the fracturing of your objects, where the weak spots are, where the you know fatigue spots are, and basically where your force is, is going to be emanating. So where, you know wherever your force will be, you're going to want to have the more, uh, much more uh, numerous fragments there and as, as farther away from the forces would be the larger pieces. So this is a great way to, to do that uh, with the path-based fracture. So we can go ahead and undo that. Let's go ahead and set the width uh, down to 0.1. Really get some fine uh, fracturing going on here. Go ahead and select our object and shatter it. Now this is the, typically the setting I use when I want some really fine cracks going down concrete. Yeah, well. You can see it's pretty pretty quick quick to fracture this as well. And there we go. Very impressive. This is a great tool. All right, let's undo that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, uh, conversely increase our width size to, say, 0 0.8. Let's go ahead and select our object and shatter. You can see, obviously, here that the uh, width of the pieces uh, at the crack, at the path, are larger. I'm going to pause it now and let it finish. And here we are coming up on about 50%. You know, sometimes I use this... Uh, uh, PDF Fracture tool to just create my uh, debris geometry that I use later as instance geometry on particles. All right, I'll turn it back here to 100%. Okay, here we are at 100%. You can see this resembles more once you get up towards the higher end of the width, you know, uh, up to point up to the full value of one, uh, you get a more uniform shatter, and that's kind of kind of something to to bear in mind when you're using this tool. That the best results are used with a small width scale uh, on here. Okay. All right, thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video where we'll go through some of the uh, rigid body options and uh, create some new material on our cut faces as well as see what this cracker object's all about.